Hello there guys, it's Stephen here and as you've noticed, I have a new set. Yes, someone got me a green screen for Christmas, thank you Nicola. <laughs> so I thought I would try something a little bit different. There was no match reaction last night because I got home from the game really, really late. Too late to make a video, edit and upload it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I thought I'd use today as the first time to try this lovely virtual city studio thing that I created. I hope you like it. I hope you like all the new ideas in this. I did say on Twitter that I wanted to up my production values this year and hopefully this falls into that category. I hope you like it. Let me know in the comments what you think of this new idea, this new set that I've got going on and also happy new year to everyone uh, I hope you had a wonderful new year I've only just got over my hangover I had far too much to drink but it was very very enjoyable so happy new year and here's to a very prosperous 2018 I'm sure it will be but anyway on to the actual game it was a routine victory but I want to start in this five things learned with the man that everyone's talking about for varying reasons at the moment David Silva now if you don't know the news broke today why he'd been absent from Manchester City for a little bit and it wasn't nice news unfortunately uh, he's son Matteo has been born prematurely and it's been a very tough time for me that can only be a horrible thing for a new father to go through I can't begin to empathize how difficult that must be it must be absolutely killing him knowing that uh, he's playing football and nowhere near his, his I presume his girlfriend his wife or whoever uh, and their newborn I'm hoping and if he's anything like his dad he'll be a tough little bastard Matteo will pull through but it, it speaks volumes for the courage of this man that he can still take a decision to do this and go and play for the club despite everything going on around him, I'm going to guess it's some kind of uh, distraction for him, much needed distraction. But if he disappears now for another two or three weeks or whatever, even longer, so be it. As Guardiola rightfully said, family is more important than football. Football is, after all, just a game. It's just a job for him. Family comes first. And I hope more than anything that Matteo pulls through to this. But onto the actual man himself. His performance last night was sensational. He showed what we've all been missing. To play that well, given what's going on inside his head, it just shows how much character, how much desire how much determination he actually has he's a wonderful person and a wonderful footballer he made us he made us tick last night it was uh, quite clear from the off how much we'd actually missed him now I'm not putting down the boring or Sterling Sterling that lot but obviously, Silva is a special, special talent. He is the heartbeat of this team. He is the man that keeps them going. And soon as he was on the pitch as well, it gave space for Sane. It gave space for De Bruyne. He had to mark someone else, another little magician. And he was finding Sane in behind the defence all night. And that's where the game, the goal came from inside about 45 seconds. His little through ball to uh, Sane. Sane's whip cross and obviously Sterling firing home. He was majestic. Finding pockets of space everywhere. The Tate in play being tenacious as ever. Uh, and he, looked like he, hadn't, he had looked like he'd never been in a way at all he's just a credit to this club David Silva and I hope more than anything that Blues get behind him I'm sure you all are you all I'm, I'm feeling online the overwhelming response he's had so far has been absolutely beautiful to read um, we all care about him so much he cares about this club he never puts a never puts a foot out of place he never moans he's a blue through and through David uh, you're not going to see this but if you did somehow I hope your son pulls through I hope your family's okay uh, because you're a city legend genuinely and you're fantastic last night Second little point, it's just a very quick one really about Edison. I know we don't need to repeat this, we know how good he is, but it just struck me last night, there's a couple of little moments where Watford did get him behind and Edison was so quick off his line yet again uh, to make a vital save. One where uh, I think the forward might have been great, tried to lob him, Edison was quick and there was another vital save after Otterman, he couldn't quite reach a through ball and he kind of tipped it around the post. He's just got this habit recently and I think about the penalty save as well against Crystal Palace, he's got this habit of just doing what he needs to do when he has to do it. It's a really, really good mindset to have. It's a great trade to be able to just pull out a big save uh, when City are cruising in general because he stops that complacency slipping in. And We all know about his passing. He's an absolute freak of nature, that man. He passes better than most 90s Man City's midfielders. I swear he could play midfield and he'd be fine. Maybe he wouldn't be the best midfield in the world, but he'd be fine. You wouldn't notice him. His passing, his composure, it just seeps confidence and distills it throughout this team. And the third point for me is about Guardiola, and he actually means business. What better way uh, to counter that dropping of points against Crystal Palace and to name that team? That was arguably our strongest 11 these days. Arguably, I say arguably because Mendy, I'm sure if he was around, he'd uh, have quite a strong claim to be in that. And maybe Jesus would like to be in there too, but that was a brutal 11, what we've named. And obviously Watford, they looked like they were devastated 
devastated as soon as they walked on the pitch. Playing the team that have already beat you 6-0 this season, then seeing that team named, it's demoralising for the opposition. Seeing David Silver there, seeing Stones back, seeing Delph back, it was just a, an incredibly strong 11. And to me, it showed how much Guardiola really wanted to win that Watford game. Now he wants to win every game, we all know that. But after the Crystal Palace game, there was no uh, room in his head for error. He really wanted to make sure that we went out there and we beat Watford and we beat them comfortably. Uh, and it worked. It should have been maybe 5 or 6 nil. At times, we were absolutely scintillating, as we all know. Guardiola had the motivated, he had the football uh, precise, intricate, he had them moving on the pitch. There was one or two sloppy moments and Guardiola himself said afterwards that we didn't move the ball quite as sharply after the initial 20 minutes and uh, then obviously we upped it again in the second half a little bit and maybe we should have scored a few more but Guardiola set them up so well and he's getting the best out of him and you can just tell at the moment that he won't let anyone be complacent. He won't let anyone think they can take the foot off the trigger, off the acceleration pedal because it, there isn't any room for that. We need to go for the kill while we still can and that's what Guardiola's got this side set up to do. The fourth point for me is Kevin De Bruyne and how good he is getting. He was a man possessed yet again last night after an absolute wallet from Jason Punch and a huge impact injury. He still proved at 4pm yesterday that he wanted to play. He took a late fitness test saying, no, I am playing. And you can't keep that desire down. He is an absolute born winner. He's growing into this leader role in this team. He'll be captain within two years in my personal opinion because he's getting this tenacity to his game. He's getting this energy, this drive. I was watching him in the stands and there's one point where the, I guess the camera on TV might have been somewhere else but I was just watching De Bruyne around and I saw him intercept in his head already planning interception five or six metres away he made it and then he chased someone else, he made another pass, and then he was running everywhere, covering so much ground, so much space. With his natural ability, he probably doesn't even have to do that, and most teams would play him. Most teams, he'd be their star man, but it's the fact that he has that guile, that determination, that ever-increasing determination, and that physicality, and that fitness, and that strength to his sublime technique. He could have had about four or five assists last night, too, given his final balls are absolutely excellent. The fact that he has all that, he's the perfect midfielder these days, and he is getting better every week. We are absolutely blessed to witness De Bruyne Silver play alongside each other and Fernandinho behind them. Fernandinho is another that has gone up a level. Uh, it's just so good watching this midfield frame. And De Bruyne, he seems to be, in my opinion, about to become the icing on a very, very, very sugary, very sweet cake at the moment because he's going up a level every single day. And finally, uh, a little thing as well about Fabian Delph. Fabian Delph always deserves a mention, as Fernandinho does. Those two I want to talk about because they're the unsung heroes of this team, in my personal opinion. Delph, it was really... Uh, kind of heartening to see his impact he had on the team now he doesn't offer loads of attacking guile going forward he isn't that kind of fullback he hasn't developed in the past few months into that kind of fullback but I don't think he ever will be but what he brings is that maturity uh, he brings almost like a, a reliability and a technique and composure and energy and commitment that most people just can't offer he obviously as well he's a midfielder as Guardiola always said he loves midfielders to play in defence because they're so comfortable on the ball and he just never seems to be flustered him coming back into the team alongside Stones coming back into the team uh this added this kind of solidity that we needed. It added this kind of coolness and this composure. And Fernandinho as well, once again, his range of passing has improved exponentially this season already. He was playing 25, 30, 45 yard balls perfectly over the top. One ball to Ryan Sterling. He didn't quite get on the end of it. He kind of scuffed the finish. Seven, 18 goals out of him, by the way. One ball over the top to Sterling was absolutely majestic. Fernandinho and Delph are becoming these kind of uh, understated talisman of the team. This, this, these workaholics that are so cool, so good posed and so reliable it's just absolutely fantastic to see Anyway, guys, that's the end of this Five Things Learned video. It was another fantastic win. We are 15 points clear. By my calculations, I think we need to win about 11 out of the next 16 games to be more or less guaranteed this. Uh, it's a very good time to be a City fan. It's great to see us immediately back on it after the draw of Crystal Palace. I wasn't bothered about the Crystal Palace draw, as I said in the video previously. I just uh, wanted to make sure that we reacted well, and we have reacted absolutely perfectly. Let me know in the comments what you think of this set, uh, this virtual studio space I've created. Uh, drop this video a like if you don't mind. Subscribe, and I will see you next time.